Well, so I think it's important to take a step back and just think about um, the gut and the microbial community within it. It's this complex ecosystem, uh, tremendous dynamics occurring, and there are a lot of selective pressures that occur over time, both from environmental factors like what uh, is in the person's diet that harbors the microbiota, but then also what's happening with the mucosal immune system on the host side. And, um, and so you I think you can think about pro-inflammatory and anti-inflammatory trajectories of host tissue as a selective process that occurs in the gut because the microbes in the gut really, um, they want to stick around. They're, there's evolutionary pressure for them to become abundant so that they can be spread to other humans. And of course, the microbes that have learned to do that are the ones that, are, that, have, have, uh, that have survived over evolutionary time. And so, um, and so you can imagine um, a microbe that actually has a tough time competing in a healthy gut, but um, if they could change the rules of the game, change the fundamental principles, the physiology um, by which the, the gut operates, they might be able to become more abundant and compete more effectively. These inflammatory trajectories um, that occur on the host side are, you can think of as a series of selective events where microbes induce a little bit of inflammation, they profit from that, they become more abundant, their competitors do worse, and there's this feedback loop so that a gut can become entrenched in an inflammatory state. And I think similarly, it can become entrenched in an anti-inflammatory state. And there's this continual battle that's very dichotomous and it's much more complex than that. But you can think about this continual battle where microbes are struggling to try to get the gut in the optimal environment for their own survival. So you can have bacteria in, in one situation that are harmless and may actually promote uh, a healthy environment, less inflammation, but in the wrong context, if they mislocalize, if they're in the wrong cohort of other microbes, the wrong consortium, it can change their function and change how they behave. So it's an incredibly complex situation and we can't just label bugs as pro-inflammatory or anti-inflammatory, it's very context dependent. Chronic disease is really difficult to study because it um, results from oftentimes decades of uh, problems with host physiology that eventually manifest. But um, if we can think about uh, chronic disease as a physiological state in which um, the, the host can't dislodge itself, it's in this feedback cycle and it can't um, get out of this chronic physiological state, um, if we could think of a way to get rid of the microbes that are potentiating that state and allow the host time to repair and achieve a new homeostasis. Um, that might be a beneficial way out of this. And so I think uh, combined therapies where you're treating both the microbes and you're treating the host and allowing the system to reset, adding microbes that perhaps are less inflammatory or in a less inflammatory state after the host has had time to repair. But I also think it's important to remember that um, probably the best avenue out of this um, situation for our society, this increase in Western diseases, is prevention. Um, because we know that this is uh, a problem of decades of, um, uh, for in an individual, decades of things going wrong slowly. Um, that we can perhaps learn basic tenets of how healthy microbiota host interactions occur and prevent this. And I think that the, that would be really a significant advance for the, for the field.